we're just days away from remote ID being compulsory here in Europe, and we're going to be talking about inputting your operator ID into the controller. And what's that three digit code at the end that you can't find? Because this is also really important as well. And DGI have just given us some news about the Air 2S and it looks like we're going to get it to be remote compliant and also flying under a certain class by the end of January 2024. So let's get into it. Hi everyone, Stephen from the Flyby Guys, and I hope you all had a great Christmas and we're now coming up to New Year and the new regulations are coming in. And I'm getting lots of questions from people asking about where and how they should input their operator ID because what's those three digits at the end? Because I don't have those three digits. Well, you do have them. And if you have saved any information from the flight authority or even going onto the portal of the country where you are, you will find that is a unique ID for you, which you have to input and we'll go through that. But first of all, we're gonna look at the recent images that DJI have released regarding the C-Class and also a little update on the Air 2S. But first of all, let's look at the Sub 250 category. You'll be flying here under A1, and this is class zero, and this will cover all of the mini series. So from the Mini 4 Pro right down to the first you know, Mavic Mini that actually came out. The weight is under 250 grams, of course. The flight scenario, you have to fly over people, or you can fly over people, but not over assemblies of people. This is very important that it's not over sports stadiums or, or let's say large events. But if it's people that are just in the area, then that is just fine. And for the training for this, you must read the manual carefully. Uh, I think there's a difference between reading the manual carefully and actually reading the manual because some people don't even read the manual. Read the manual, it's really important, it's, it is vital because if you're up there and, you're, and you find some trouble, uh, you know, that's when the manual comes in handy, okay? So that is the uh, sub-250 class, so you're flying in class zero You and you do not have to broadcast remote ID. So if you, if you are so inclined that you feel that you don't want to, then get yourself a sub 250 and fly there because you know you don't have to and even if you're working so if you're using this drone for work you also don't have to broadcast remote id not like the us where you can fly and not broadcast and not broadcast remote id but if you're flying on the part 107 then you have to broadcast your remote id this is different here in europe so we don't have to at all okay so good news there for anyone who is a little bit paranoid okay although you have no need to be but next image from dji is the class one, which you're, again, you're still flying in the A1 class here as well, the, you know, the A1 certificate you get from EASA. And this basically covers the Mavic 3 series and also the Air 3 as well. So the Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Classic uh, and the Air 3. And as we're seeing here from DJI are going to release a software update at the end of January for the Air 2S. Now this is great news because the Air 2S is a fabulous drone. It's one of my favorite drones and I know some of you out there do have that and it's kind of been forgotten about because of the recent updates and because it hasn't been given any class, but it's now, uh, it now be under the uh, class, um, you know, the class one and you're able to fly over A1. So under 900 grams, uh, flying over people, but not assemblies of people. Same again, no sports, no no large events. And you must complete an online training for that as well, for the A1 certificate. Okay, so look out for that with the, with the Air 2S. That's great news because it's a fine drone and I really do love that drone. Next one is the A2. And the A2 basically covers the Mavic 3 Pro and also not mentioned here, the Mavic 3 Enterprise series. So any of the Mavic 3 Enterprise, as well as the Mavic 3 Pro, uh, the weight is under four kilograms. You can fly close to people, but you have to obtain a remote pilot certificate for competence on that as well. Um, so again, uh, I have received the update, the software update for the, uh, for, for the Mavic 3 and also for the Enterprise series as well and I've got them all done. So that means that we're ready to go with the A2 and flying under, under the class two as well. Next, we have the A3 and A3 is basically all the legacy drones. So you have the Inspire 3, you also have Inspire 2, Mavic 2 Pro, Phantom 4, uh, and also we can see here that Avatar is, is, is classed under that as well. 
Um, so, the, and the weight is basically over 20, you know, it's, it's under 25 grams. You can fly far from people's so hands, 150 meters you have to fly. And then you have to complete an online training for that too. Now, the Mavic 2 Pro has received an update where you can put in your remote ID. I've tried to do it and the it's not really accepting it. So, um, it's not the same interface as we have with the, with the DJI Fly app. Uh, because we're also using uh, DJI Go 4. Hopefully DJI will fix that at some point as well. Okay, so now getting on to the operator ID. So I've had many questions from people asking, how do I input the operator ID into the Fly app? Because it's, uh, it's a 16 digit code, plus there's another code I need to put in there as well, and I don't know how to get that. Well, it's actually quite simple. Um, when you register, you will will have had an email from the authorities, you know, with all the information about you know the date that you've registered and when you should renew that. Um, you'll also have your operator ID on there as well. Now, what you'll also have is an operator ID code, and that's a three-digit code, and that's kind of like your PIN code, a bit like you know when you go to the ATM and you and you, you know you get money from the wall, you have your code. This is what that is. And that's the three digits that you have to put at the end of the operator ID, which that you can see on the user interface. Now, uh, you might have that on that email that you get when you registered, or you might get it from the portal of the country that you're in. For example, here in Finland, we don't have a portal, so we just get it when we register, and that's it. But if you have lost it, you can contact the authorities, and they will send you a, you know a, a copy of that code which you should keep safe now when you input that into the user interface of the controller make sure that you have that you have network connection from your you know you, you know if it's your phone or or if it's home to the controller because you know you have to have the internet in order to register so it knows that it's the right one because when you put in the operator ID and the code, it knows and then it will accept it. It's also case sensitive. So make sure that you have the correct, uh, you know, let's say, you know, if it's going to be capitals or it's small letters or it's the digits and then you put the dash at the end for, you know, when you put in the code. So make sure you have all that. It has to be exactly as you see it in order for it to be accepted. If it's not accepted, it could be because you have the wrong uh, you know, you know the wrong case, or you may well not be connected to the internet. So make sure that that is all done, and then, as you will see, it has been accepted, and then everything is fine, and then you're ready to go. Also, just one other tip: I've been using Remote ID now for a while because you know it's it's, it's very easy, and, and and I have nothing to fear. Um, if you get software updates, make sure that you check your Remote ID is still active after uh, you know after the updates that you do for for that drone because. I noticed that once it had been taken away and I had to put it back in again. So you could may if if you're like me and you want to have a pre-flight checklist and stuff, you can maybe add remote ID to check that you have that active there as well. I hope this was helpful. Please make sure you like this video. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please be a subscriber because we're updating you with everything in the drone world. Uh, because this is this is your job. This is what we do every day. And I, I, you know, and I love, you know, giving this information to you because it's real. We do it, and and we want to make a difference. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great new year. Make sure you comply and fly safe. <laughs>